<laughs> uh, Representative Hornstein, the uh, chair moves to refer House File 1691 to the Judiciary uh, Committee. Uh, Representative Hornstein, you have an author's amendment, is that correct? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I have an A1 amendment, uh, just simply gets the bill in the uh, shape I'd like the committee to consider it in. Uh, well. It uh, clarifies a few things. Um, I, I can certainly talk about it or-, or uh, That's okay. It's, well, it's well, simply we'll, a, a, a technical amendment, Mr. Okay, Chair. Okay, we'll talk about it if we need to during the- uh, uh, Re Representative Johnson, okay, we just uh, do a voice vote to get the author's amendment on. Uh, I believe there's an amendment to the amendment as well. So if you could, ex it'd be nice if you could explain it so people oh, understand what amendment the amendment to the, the amendment amendment. is. Okay, all right. Well then, very well. Representative Hornstein, please explain your amendment. And then is the amendment to the amendment your amendment? Oh, uh, that would be my amendment. Okay, I'm catching up. Representative Hornstein, uh, your amendment, uh, I think you said was a technical amendment. Is there anything else you need well, to say? Well, it, it's, it, it's, um, there are uh, a couple of parts. First, um, okay. we are uh, the main piece here, and I, uh, I'm just uh, going to get it uh, up here because we're on a little quicker than I thought, Mr. Chair. So let me just make sure I have it uh, in front of me. Um, but the first part of my amendment um, simply clarifies the role of the post board uh, in uh, this bill. Uh, it's a little bit different than last year. Um, we're uh, simply asking the board to um, uh, update their training on, on hate and bias crimes uh, and uh, simply uh, uh, collaborate with the Department of Human Rights in making sure that that uh, update is uh, approved. And then there's a, an opportunity for outside uh, entities to collaborate on that training. Um, so let me um, also call up the second part of this amendment, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, if you'll just allow me to get situated here. The second part of the amendment just clarifies the um, uh, grants program to um, community organizations uh, that's envisioned in this bill. Uh, again, the main part of this bill, Mr. Chair and members, is to uh, allow for community reporting of hate crimes. And so there's a grants program from the Department of Human Rights, and this just clarifies the administrative costs of that program. Very well. Uh, I'd ask committee members for their support. Okay, very well. Uh, Representative Ornstein, and obviously I'm trying to move fast because we uh, started um, late, unfortunately. We've got lots to go through. So, um, and obviously we're not hearing about your bill yet, but my intention here would be to, um, um, to act on these amendments and then we'll get uh, to the main body of your bill. Representative Johnson, you have an amendment. Uh, the chair has moved the A1 amendment. Do you have an amendment to the amendment? Uh, Chair Mariani, I do have an amendment to the amendment. Um, it deals on uh, uh, page one, line 16. I'm sorry, Representative Johnson, is that the A2 amendment? That would be the A2, the A4 amendment. A4 amendment, okay. Representative Johnson moves adoption of the A4 amendment as, A4. as an amendment to the amendment. Got it. Good. Mr. Chair, may I ask a question of clarification, please? Rep Representative Cleaver. Okay, um, as I'm reading it, there is an A4 amendment, but it doesn't say that it's an amendment to Chair Hornstein's amendment. Am I missing something? The A1 amendment is the amendment to the amendment. Okay. Okay. I I just see it as an amendment. It doesn't say that it's an amendment to an amendment. So I don't line one line one point one moves to amend the amendment. Thank you very much. All okay, right. back to uh, hold, back. hold on, hold on, Representative Johnson, because now I'm confused. I mean, I apologize to everyone. Um, 
Uh, I'm going to ask uh, my legal counsel to help me out here. Um, uh, there is a author's amendment. Um, I believe it's the A1 amendment. Is that correct? That's correct, Representative Hornstein, and then also to... Yes, I, I, I had the same question that uh, Representative Cleveland did. Uh, my amendment is the A1 amendment. And, and the, A, the A4 is the amendment to the amendment. Oh, very well. Okay, Representative Johnson moves adoption of the A4 amendment. Representative Johnson, to your amendment. Uh, what the A4 amendment does on line uh, 16 of the uh, page one, it changes it from 4% for administrative costs down to 2.5%, which it gets in line with what the o OJP does as well. If there's a, a million dollar grant giving out that gives, giving the, uh, that's $25,000 that could be used for the program instead of administering the programs. Uh, our grants have getting, been getting larger and larger. The amount of work uh, for a grant doesn't change a lot. And our percentages are getting to the point where a lot of these nonprofits, the administrative cost is running the uh, 901C3 or the uh, nonprofit that's doing it instead of doing what the program is designed to do. Uh, so what this does, this amendment gets the administrative costs and fees that can be charged for the grants down in line with what the Office of Justice program uh, does as well, down at two and a half percent. Thank you, uh, Representative Hornstein. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, um, Representative Johnson. Um, I had a, a conversation, and I know that uh, Mr. Um, Armaconqui from uh, the Department of uh, Human Rights is, I believe, on the call. And uh, I did have a, a text exchange with him earlier about this uh, very issue. Um, and I did want to note, Mr. Chair, I don't, uh, on at least the committee homepage, I didn't see the amendment to the amendment. So I don't know if there's others that are uh, having that same. Uh, challenge, but uh, Representative Johnson, it is very clear. I understand <laughs> what what you are uh, attempting to do here, and um, uh, maybe if Mr. Uh, so, I, I did ask that question, Representative Johnson, to uh, Mr. Uh, Armaconqui, and um, he did indicate that four percent was the figure. So, I don't know if he's available to explain um, uh, explain that uh, that uh, figure. Representative, Representative Harsey, if you can do it in 30 seconds, I'm more than willing to entertain that. Is there a okay. Mr. McConkey here? Mr. Chair, um, members of the committee, hi. Eric, Eric McConkey from the Minnesota Department of Human Rights. Welcome to the committee. Uh, quickly, sir. Thank you. Yes. So when we were evaluating the administrative costs, um, the, 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 this aspect of the bill, a grant program is a new procedure for our department. And so we looked at what OJP was doing at 2.5, other state agencies have three or four high percent administrative costs. And so because this is a new process for our, our department, we wanted to make sure that we have the adequate uh, administrative resources available to, to do this well. And so we felt that 4% was a fair figure for that. Very well, Representative Jackson, to your amendment. Uh, Chair Mariani. Uh, members, I, I, we need to take a deep dive into uh, what we're giving out uh, for administrative costs for these grants. We're giving more and more. Uh, just like today with the, uh, the bill that was passed off the House floor today, uh, the administrative cost for that grant is one is just about $1 million that could have been used for students instead. Uh, just because of the, the, and that was only, that was, so we need to start looking at this. I think we need to start streamlining our grant process. And, um, instead of sending money out to uh, nonprofits, maybe we should just have the OJP do it where we can get more money out there. Because we're taking on a million dollar grant at, uh, at 4%, that's $40,000. If, our depart if the Department of Human Services can't do a grant for $25,000, maybe they shouldn't be doing grants. Because um, we gotta get, put the money where it belongs and not align the uh, bureaucrats. So I, I would hope that the department or the, uh, the author would accept this amendment. We need to start getting things back in line where they belong. Um, it's, it's, it's an issue that uh, we need to really look at, and I know in, 
uh, some of my colleagues in other departments are looking at that as well to uh, get a flat fee for all the uh, grant programs. For Mr. Johnson, grants. do you want to roll on this or voice vote? I'll do a voice vote. I'll, Very well. I'll, be, kind, a... I'll be kind today. <laughs> well, the chair can certainly use it uh, after this rough start. Uh, Representative Horstein, uh, quick last um, Thank you, Representative. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Representative Johnson. Um, I, uh, you know, at this point, I'm going to um, uh, oppose this amendment. I, I think Mr. Amarkanku, we uh, uh, discussed why uh, the, the fee is a, a little higher than uh, the um, other uh, agency that we're talking about in this bill. However, Representative Johnson, I'm in, I will be having follow-up conversations with the agency just to find out a little bit more about this. I think you raise a valid point, but you know, I'm, I'm going to go with uh, their advice at this juncture. All right, I appreciate it then. Um, so all in favor of the A4 amendment, please say aye. 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 All aye. same sign. No. No. Aye. No. no. Motion does not prevail and the A4 amendment is not uh, adopted. Um, are there any other amendments to the amendment? I don't think there are. If not, uh, Representative Johnson, voice vote on the author's amendment. Uh, can I speak on the author's amendment briefly? Please. Yes. I was just going to, I, unfortunately, I didn't catch this earlier. Um, I'm not sure if Representative Hornstein knows this or not, but Post Board does not do the curriculum. They approve, uh, they look at the, they make out learning object, objectives and they approve the uh, curriculum that uh, a different department want might want to use. They don't approve the courses, just the curriculum, what's in it with the outlines. Um, so if I, I'll, this, uh, this amendment does help this a little bit and clears things up, but there's still some issues with it that need to be cleared up on what post board's responsibilities are as well. Very well, Representative Hornstein. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair and, and Representative Johnson. That is exactly what you're saying is exactly what we and the purpose of the amendment and cleaning up the language a little bit, uh, because I think you very accurately described my understanding of the post board's role. Okay, very well. Voice vote, Representative Johnson. Voice vote is fine. Very well. All in favor of the A1 amendment, please say aye. 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 Same sign. Motion prevails, and the A1 uh, amendment is amended onto the bill. Uh, Representative Hornstein, there are some other amendments. Um, however, I think um, it, it might be good just to hear about the bill first, and then we'll do the other amendments. Representative Hornstein, you have some testifiers. Uh, yes, just one in the interest of time, um, Mr. Really Chair, and I don't know if you want me to go through the bill or have the testifier first. If you can go through the bill as it pertains to uh, public safety, that would be helpful. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members, and I really appreciate your hearing House File 1691. Uh, we heard a very similar bill uh, last year, and um, I find uh, I, I was reflecting on that hearing, uh, Mr. Chair, as we uh, headed into this hearing and uh, it was one of the last hearings that I did and perhaps this committee did before we uh, had to make all of the adjustments uh, as it related to COVID-19. And um, I recall a, a real spirit of, of bipartisanship, of uh, interest in this bill. Um, uh, we had members on both sides of the aisle uh, speaking in support of it. And it was that moment of unity that I felt uh, very, very good about. Um, we had two teenagers that spoke at that hearing, uh, a Muslim and a Jewish, two Muslim, a Muslim and Jewish teenage uh, young women uh, who spoke of their experiences in school and in the community uh, with hate crimes. And so what's happened in the last year, I think uh, this issue has gotten even more urgent and, and more timely. Uh, we have uh, just uh, been hearing the accounts, the, the the very tragic accounts of what happened in Atlanta last week. Uh, we had the, the issue of uh, the activities on January 6th, uh, which were traumatic for many, uh, images of a Confederate flag being paraded through the Capitol, uh, a t-shirt that said Camp Auschwitz on it, uh, the FBI documenting the uh, role of, of hate and extremist groups in uh, that uh, insurrection. 
uh, and many, many incidents uh, that you'll hear about in a minute, particularly as it relates to the uh, Asian American community, Asian American Pacific Islander community uh, as a result of COVID. Um, there's an excellent uh, editorial in the Star Tribune this morning uh, that documents this. So very quickly, um, Mr. Chair and members, I will just uh, discuss the three key elements of this bill. Uh, first and foremost, it uh, allows for a community reporting of hate crimes. Uh, across the board, experts and law enforcement agree that hate crimes are uh, seriously underreported. And that underreporting undercuts our ability to uh, respond to hate crimes effectively uh, and to hold the perpetrators accountable. And so uh, what we have found out uh, over the years is that community organizations have said, if you give us the opportunity to collect data and report that, in this case, uh, to the Department of Human Rights, uh, we will be able to, uh, again, have more accurate figures and be able to respond uh, more effectively. Uh, we also understand uh, that uh, the uh, Post Board um, has not updated their hate crimes uh, manual uh, in 30 years. Uh, this bill uh, acknowledges that problem and uh, sets out, as Representative Johnson um, mentioned, a process with the post board uh, to uh, address the, the curricular needs of law enforcement when it comes to responding to hate crimes. Uh, finally, we have a uh, provision that addresses a loophole, a couple of loopholes in existing hate crimes law, particularly as it uh, uh, pertains to property. Uh, we have seen a number of incidents, again, over the last year, uh, racist, anti-Semitic, Islamophobic graffiti on schools, on buildings, on community institutions, uh, swastikas, uh, and other uh, very hateful messages. And this simply acknowledges that problem. Again, we've seen this in mosques as well, uh, that, uh, that, that property uh, is an important piece of this because when uh, hateful messages are sprayed on uh, faith institutions and community institutions, uh, that has a chilling effect on an entire community. So we wanna make sure that the property piece of this is adequately addressed. So uh, finally, um, Mr. Chair and members, we also have, again, the, uh, uh, what Representative Johnson uh, was referencing earlier, we have a grant program uh, for a victim's compensation fund, uh, as well as grants to community organizations uh, so that they can uh, better do outreach uh, on these issues and the, uh, and funding the reporting process for the Department of Human Rights. So um, in conclusion, I would just simply say that um, this is an issue that I hope can bring us all together. Um, uh, we are a welcoming state. Uh, we are a diverse state. Uh, we want to make sure that everybody feels safe in Minnesota and that we can make a uh, significant contribution in improving the quality of life for all uh, by uh, updating, uh, a needed update uh, to our hate crime statute, which of course dates back to the late 1980s. So with that members, I'm happy to answer questions. I do have, and again, we have many, many uh, community organizations, citizens groups, uh, the attorney general uh, who support this bill, but in the interest of time, we will not be having extensive testimony, but I did wanna hold up the coalition of Asian American leaders uh, whose support has been critical throughout this process and is particularly timely in this moment, Mr. Chair. Very well. And you do have someone from the Coalition of Asian American Leaders to testify, is that? Yes, Mr. Nick Kaur, I believe, I hope is on the call. Um, and he, he has prepared some brief testimony. Let's see if he's here, Mr. Kaur. I'm here. Very well, welcome, sir. State your name for the record. Give us your, your brief testimony. My name is Nick Kaur. Um, I'm the senior manager of movement building at Cal, the Coalition of Asian American Leaders. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative Hornstein for your strong partnership. And thank you, members of the committee. Um, I am speaking with you today, one week after the devastating murders in Atlanta, where a shooter targeted uh, three Asian owned businesses and killed eight people, six of whom were Asian women. Um, unfortunately, this act of hate does not stand alone and fits with a pattern that we've seen before in history. Um, and here in Minnesota, as in other parts of the United States, we've seen an increase in attacks and violence directed towards Asian American communities. 
The latest data shows nearly 4,000 reported incidents of anti-Asian violence nationwide, with women representing over 60% of the cases. Um, here in Minnesota, we have seen physical and verbal abuse on the streets, in stores, and in other public places. Just last Friday, um, a group of Asian parents and students also experienced hate when a driver came up to them and told them to leave this country or they would be killed. We've seen intimidation, um, as is the case with a young couple in Woodbury who came home to a, door, uh, a note left on their door telling them to take the virus and go home. And there was another incident in Austin, Minnesota, where the words China virus were burned on a family's front lawn. Um, Unfortunately, our children have not been immune to this either, and they have also see seen continued anti-Asian harassment and discrimination in schools. We support this bill because it closes loopholes in hate crimes laws, and importantly, it provides support to victims of hate, and it allows us as, co uh, as community organizations to be co-responders to hate. As a trusted community organization, people are already choosing to come to us rather than the police or other government entities. And they come to us because they want to be heard and they want to be supported. Unfortunately, right now, we simply don't have the support to play that role. And often when community members report to us, um, what we report back is discounted. And so our communities are scared. They're worried and they're asking for our help. So we are asking for your help. What happened in Atlanta does not have to happen, and we have a chance to make sure it doesn't happen again. Everyone should feel safe walking out on the street and feel like they can do it without fear of being targeted or attacked. Our communities are in pain right now. We are hurting, we are scared, and we are looking to our elected leaders to take action. And so right now we ask for your support and urge you to pass this bill. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Corn. And Mr. And Chair. Thank you for the Coalition of Asian American Leaders. I've had the privilege to work with Cal for uh, quite a few years on a number of projects in the community. Uh, just an exciting, terrific, um, you know, civic organization enriching our state. Um, thank you, sir. Uh, Representative uh, Horstein. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I also wanted to um, ask um, Representative Vang to say a few words. Um, we talked uh, ahead of this um, hearing that, that we would want to be, that we are partners in this and uh, in, a, in a sense, co-presenting this bill to the committee. I'm sorry I didn't, uh, I, I should have called on her earlier before a community uh, person, but if, if she could just say a couple of words, um, Mr. Chair, uh, as a member of the committee and uh, kind of a, a, a great partner in, in promoting this effort. Let's do that, then we'll move on to the uh, two amendments. Representative Vang. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and thank you, Representative Horstein, uh, for your work on this. Um, I, I'll just keep it brief. Um, uh, you know, since when the pandemic started, the first phase of uh, anti-Asian sentiment started in the Asian stores, like a year ago, uh, when we were dealing with issues of price gouging and stores with empty shelves uh, running out of toilet paper and hand sanitizer, the Asian stores were left untouched, full in stock, because they were deemed unclean and associated with uh, where the virus is coming from. And then the turning point of the anti-Asian hate came from our former President Trump, who called it the Chinese virus, uh, further exacerbating the stigma the Asian community is already dealing with. And, and then from then on, uh, we saw numerous social media stories of Asian elders getting attacked at the parks, a Asian Americans verbally harassed, and parking lots, uh, and, many, and many more. Um, even while all this is happening, uh, the state did not have the infrastructure to capture what is happening in our community. We had to scramble to set up a hotline and, and recording depository to capture all the hate and bias incidents and crime with the Minnesota Department of Human Rights. And I'm grateful for the leadership of Commissioner Lucero prioritizing that work. Uh, to date, nearly 10% of all COVID-19 related calls to them for bias and hate incidents. And I know for sure that is an understatement and definitely underreported. Uh, this bill can help improve how hate and, disc and discrimination is reported and can shed light to the realities our communities are experiencing. And we still have a lot to do to address hate and um, most particularly anti-Asian hate. Um, and we can't allow it for it to continue. Um, and thank you for that, I yield my time. Thank you, Representative uh, Vang. I obviously can't speak for the entire legislature, but I suspect 
uh, we're uh, unanimous in our uh, support of our Asian uh, citizens and residents uh, in our state. Um, um, I can't imagine the, uh, the deep sorrow and pain and shock that, that's going through the community uh, right now. And let us uh, continue to work on good public policy and laws to walk with your communities and other communities as well. Uh, members, uh, there are two uh, amendments. There is a A, let me get my amendments right because I haven't done that yet. Uh, there's an A2 amendment. Is anyone offering the A2 amendment? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, that'd be Representative Grassl. I am offering the A2 amendment. Representative Grassl moves adoption of the A2 amendment. Representative Grassl to your amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee. Um, you know, listening to uh, the, the prior speakers and listen to Representative Hornstein describe some of the things that uh, were being uh, spray painted, some of the things were being said, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and I, I look at uh, this, uh, this section, uh, section three of, uh, of this bill, and you know, with a lot of the with a lot of the uh, graffiti that was spray painted along a lot of the buildings during the riots in Minneapolis, um, anarchists, um, the Antifa uh, signia was all over the place. And this is uh, these are pictures that uh, friends of mine who were on the ground in the law enforcement community that were there uh, fighting to protect uh, the citizens of Minneapolis. These are some of the pictures that they took while they were while they were working to try to take care of people and help people. Um, there were things there that uh, excuse the, excuse the uh, well, I won't use the actual word, but I'll use the first letter of that word, F12, well, meaning F the police. And there's a lot of F the police stuff, die pigs, all of that kind of stuff that was there. And so, you know, I look at, I look at that and uh, section three of this bill adds uh, an expanded definition of the biased crime to the statute that uh, carries 25% longer statutory maximum penalty than a maximum penalty for first, second, and third degree assault. Now, you know, the first degree, I would like to expand on this with my amendment that will uh, also add that 25% to uh, first degree assault from 20 to 25 years, second degree assault with a dangerous weapon resulting in substantial bodily harm from 10 years to 12.5 years, third degree assault resulting in substantial bodily harm from five to 6.25 years. Um, this amendment will also add uh, police officers, prosecuting attorneys, judges, correctional officers, and National Guard members acting in the performance of their duties uh, to this statute that the, the, uh, to the Hornstein uh, bill. Um, people in these professions People in these professions, uh, especially these boots on the ground, these officers on the ground, face danger every day. From, you know, from like I described uh, in my own experience, you can go from a, a disgruntled customer in a hotel call to shots fired. So it, it would help uh, these professionals keep, keep safe as they administer uh, justice. And yet, you know, like I said, they're under attack every day because of who they are, as, and, or not because of who they are as a person, but because of, of what they do for a living. Um, and so, you know, I'd like to add that on there. And again, I'm gonna take a step back uh, to uh, 2000, 2001, when I first uh, became a police officer. And the, I just gave you a brief description of the scenario of that call that morning of uh, a disrupted customer. And it turned out this individual had decided he was going to kill me that morning. I knew who the person was, called him by name, asked him what was going on. He hadn't threatened anybody at that point. But in the snap of a finger, I've got a 38 revolver sticking about three inches from the bridge of my notes. And he had decided right then and there, it was going to kill me. Now, fortunately, I was able to grab that weapon. First round went past my ear as, as he fired that weapon. And uh, I've, got, uh, <laughs> I've got tinnitus in my left ear to this day. Um, I struggled with the person to try to disarm him. And the second round went through my forearm, traveled up through my arm, shattered my humerus on the left arm. So I was uh, down to one arm trying to fight this man off. 
trying to still, still trying to disarm it, trying to bring it to a peaceful resolution. And uh, went on, fired one more round through the couch as I stuffed the gun into the couch before my partner was able to get a clear and safe shot and stop the threat. Now, you know, I can give you another example of, uh, of what went on, of, of uh, officers being, being uh, targeted because they're in the uniform, because of what they do for a living, not because of who they are. A little more than a year ago, Waseca police officer, Eric Matson was shot in the head responding to a call. The, the perpetrator in that case was only given 20 years sentence for, a, for his attempted murder. I look at that and I'm thinking, my goodness, this officer's life has been changed forever. He's slowly recovering, but he will never return, he never return to uh, work as a police officer. And that was, you know, because he was doing his job Responding to a call, someone decided they wanted to kill him. So you know this is, uh, and this is this is leads me to this. You know, Representative uh, John Petersburg has a bill that would increase the penalty for first degree assault of a peace officer, prosecutor, judge, correctional officer. That's House File 185, and this bill is sitting in the committee's uh, jurisdiction. Uh, but we've been and we've been working to try to get some of these bills heard. Mr. Chair, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, this will shed a good light on uh, what needs to be done. I'd like to, I'd like to hope, I'd like to lobby for that bill to get moved forward. If you, if you please consider that. If we're going to increase the penalty for assault motivated by bias, this should also certainly include bias against, bias against uh, criminal justice officials, and that's why I'm adding. To, I'm. Uh, advocating for this amendment to, for your support, for the committee's support. And I ask, Mr. Chair, committee, as someone who is, who is speaking from firsthand experience, someone who put on a uniform every day to go out and serve and protect my communities, my counties, the state. And the only reason I was shot in the line of duty is because I had that uniform on because of what that person associated me with, not because of who I am, not because of the color of my skin, not because of what, whatever religion I am, but because I was wearing that uniform. So I'm asking the committee to please add this, add this amendment on to this piece of legislation so that there is, there is uh, protection all around. And I ask for a roll call on this, please. Representative Hornstein. Um, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, and uh, I just would recommend a no vote on this. Um, you know, we do already have uh, enhanced penalties for various uh, 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 issues related to um, murder, assault, uh, fleeing a police officer. Uh, obstructing a legal process, uh, disarming a police officer. Those are all in Minnesota statute currently sections, uh, section 609 is the section of law. So we already have this in place. Uh, and I think the second issue, um, Mr. Chair, is that um, in human rights law, in civil rights law, um, we have uh, very specific protected classes, uh, you know, based on their identity, uh, not their profession. And I think that's a really important uh, thing to keep in mind. And so uh, for those two reasons, um, uh, Mr. Chair, I'd, I'd ask for a no vote on this amendment. Very well. Uh, Representative Grasso moves adoption of the A, renews his motion to adopt the A2 amendment. The, role, the clerk will take the roll. Chair Mariani. No. Chair Mariani, nay. Vice Chair Frazier? Absolutely not. Vice Chair Frazier, <laughs> nay. Representative Johnson? Aye. Representative Johnson, aye. Representative Edelson? No. Representative Edelson, nay. Representative Feist? Nay. <laughs> Sorry, Representative, nay. Representative Feist, nay. Representative Grossel? 
Aye. Representative Grasso, aye. Representative Hollins? No. Representative Hollins, nay. Representative Hewitt? No. Representative Hewitt, nay. Representative Cleavorn? No. Representative Cleavorn, nay. Representative Long? No. Representative Long, nay. Representative Lucero? Absolutely, positively, yes. Representative Lucero, aye. Representative Mueller? Mueller votes yes. Representative Mueller, aye. Representative Novotny? Novotny, aye. Representative Novotny, aye. Representative O'Neill? O'Neill, aye. Representative O'Neill, aye. Representative Pinto? No. Representative Pinto, nay. Representative Poston? Aye. Representative Poston, aye. Representative Raleigh? Raleigh, aye. Representative Raleigh, aye. Representative Vang? No. Representative Vang, nay. Representative Zhang, excused. That concludes roll call with eight ayes and 10 nays. With uh, 10, <clears throat> excuse me, with eight ayes and 10 nays, the motion does not prevail. Uh, the A2 amendment is not adopted. There is an A3 amendment. Is someone offering the A3 amendment? And Mr. Chair, I will offer the A3 amendment. Representative Lucero moves adoption of the A3 amendment. Representative Lucero to your amendment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you, Chair Hortman, or not Hortman, <laughs> Chair Hornstein, for for the great conversation. And uh, while we agree on a great many things, and probably the most important thing we agree on is the best city in all of the state of Minnesota is the city of Dayton. But there are a few things that we we do uh, not agree on, and I do have some concerns with uh, my good friends, Bill. And so when I'm looking at Section Eight. Uh, actually, let me preface it with this. I was actually listening to the testimony uh, and some of the comments from Representative Vang and others. And uh, we have, uh, my own family makeup is a very plethora uh, of diversity. Uh, on an ethnic level, we've got Hispanic, we have Black, we have uh, Asian, and I think I'm even forgetting uh, one, as I'm in my mind's eye going around the, the, the very diverse family I've got. On a religious level, we have Christians, we have Islam, we have Hindus. Uh, so we have a, a very great diversity in just my own family. So I, I can appreciate uh, the very uh, benefits uh, of diversity and I can very much appreciate the concerns when there is hate towards groups for nothing else other than who they are. Very much can appreciate that and that's very angering because no matter what a person's background is, no matter uh, uh, what, uh, they are as a human, they deserve to have their individual liberties protected. But that is different uh, than some of the, the uh, I think, the definitions that are gonna be expanded here. And among them, that causes me concern is uh, gender identity, gender expression, uh, and expansion in this area. Because I believe in science. I believe that if you have an XY chromosome, you're a male, and if you have a YY chromosome, you're a female. But I think that this, the, the language in here is gonna put uh, uh, Minnesotans in an awkward position of having to be science deniers and having to choose science over somebody's confusion. And I, in preparation for this, I uh, was reminded of a YouTube video and I looked it up just to, to refresh myself of the details and it's a minute, 36 seconds. And if we had time, I'd play it, but it's riddled with, with curse words. So I can't play it for the committee here, but it is a short video. And it's, uh, it's uh, uh, a man who is confused uh, and wants to be called a woman. And when he's not, he goes on a rampage, uh, a, a blue streak of curse words and starts kicking over things and it happens in a, in a GameStop store. And I am very concerned about people that want to believe in science and call people what they actually are rather than uh, they're, they're confused and, and trying to, to uh, be called something that they're not. So the amendment that I'm offering uh, is, it just simply reads, a peace officer is immune from claims and is not subject to any suits, liability, damages, or any other or any other recourse, civil, criminal, or disciplinary arising from any report made pursuant to this section here uh, in the bill for not making a report alleged to have been required under the paragraph, under the, the, the bill here, provided the peace officer acted in good faith. And if no report was made, the peace officer did not know that the crime was motivated by bias or investigated the victim's allegation, 
that the crime was motivated by bias and determined that it was not motivated by bias. Good faith is presumed until proven otherwise by the complainant. So, or and the complainant has the burden of proving lack of good faith. So members, we're in a situation here where uh, somebody's gender expression, there might be uh, some confusion there. And I don't wanna put our peace officers in a position where even though they acted in good faith, they might be subject to disciplinary action. So I would ask for a green vote on the amendment. Thank you. Representative Hornstein. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative Lucero. I recommend the no vote. Uh, there's a couple of issues here. Uh, number one, um, you know, the bill doesn't really deal with immunity. Uh, I think we're getting into sort of the area of, uh, you know, area of debate, I think, when we talk about police accountability, that of qualified immunity. And my understanding is that there will be a bill perhaps coming on that to this committee shortly. But um, I think, Representative Lucero, your point speaks to the training piece of this bill. Uh, and that is why I think that, um, you know, to the issues you raise, I, I think uh, the, the, the update of the training uh, would be very, is very, very important to, you know, address some of the issues that you raise. Uh, I know we have uh, an expert on the line who could talk uh, further about uh, gender issues, but I did want to just mention that, um, you know, we are very, very concerned about the exponential increase in um, uh, hate crimes directed at the LGBTQ community and particularly transgender women of color and uh, heinous crimes, violent crimes, and everybody should be protected. This is the, the bottom line of our civil rights and human rights laws in the state. Everybody is protected, no exceptions. And so when, um, when we look at this bill, I think again, uh, you, you speak to the importance of, of, of training for law enforcement and that's what, what this bill accomplishes. And Mr. Chair, again, I, we do have, uh, uh, one of our former colleagues could potentially talk to the, this issue. I knew that uh, Representative Lucero had brought it up last year in the Judiciary Committee, so um, I know that he has some concerns about it. And we, we do have our, our former colleague, um, Representative Aaron Make Way. Representative Orsi, we're going to move to a vote on the amendment. Uh, and okay. that was, thank you. Roll call, Mr. Vote. Or Mr. Chair. Roll call has been called. Uh, Representative Lucero um, uh, moves to um, uh, renews his motion to amend House File 1693 with the 83 Amendment. Clerk will take the roll. Chair Mariani. No. Chair Mariani, nay. Vice Chair Frazier. No. Vice Chair Frazier, nay. Representative Johnson. Aye. Representative Johnson, aye. Representative Edelson. No. Representative Edelson, nay. Representative Feist. Nay. Representative Feist, nay. Representative Grossel. Aye. Sorry, can you repeat that? Aye. Representative Grossel, aye. Representative Hollins. Nay. Representative Hollins, nay. Representative oh, Hewitt. No. Representative nay. Hewitt, nay. Representative Cleavorn. No. Representative Cleavorn, nay. Representative Long. No. Representative Long, nay. Representative Lucero. Yes. Representative Lucero, aye. Representative Mueller. Mueller votes yes. Representative Mueller, aye. Representative Novotny. Aye. Representative Novotny, aye. Representative O'Neill. O'Neill, aye. Representative O'Neill, aye. Representative Pinto. No. Representative Pinto, nay. Representative Poston. Aye. Representative Poston, aye. Representative Raleigh. Raleigh, aye. Representative Raleigh, aye. Representative Vang. No. Representative Vang, nay. That concludes roll, or er, Representative Zhang, excused. That concludes roll call with 18 ayes and 10 nays. Thank you, Ms. Agufalami. On a vote of eight ayes and 10 nays, the motion does not prevail. Um, the 83 amendment is not adopted. Uh, Representative Hornstein, uh, last few seconds on your bill, and then we'll get to take a vote on it. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members, for a great discussion. Uh, this bill will help people feel safer in the state of Minnesota, and I urge a yes vote. Very well. Uh, Chair Mariani, I would have liked to discuss this bill a little bit. Uh, you never gave us an opportunity. Representative Johnson, um, I certainly have given everyone an opportunity to speak. Uh, do you wish to speak now? I do. We were speaking on the Johnson. amendments before. This is the first time with the bill. Representative Johnson. Uh, I'm Chair Mariani, members, I'm disappointed we tried to make a bill that's got some 
got some issues a little better. Um, I'm disappointed in some of the testimony I heard. Uh, they talked about the Atlanta issue and if uh, the original reports that came out were not good. The news reports, um, I have a lot of my sympathies to those families out there. But uh, during the investigation, it, it turned the only crime bias was against pornography. The shooter actually said he had a problem with pornography and he was going after those businesses to try to help his issue with pornography. Uh, it's unfortunate that uh, what happened, um, there's a mental health issue that needs to be dealt with. Um, I'm hoping that that person will get the help he needs, uh, but he also held accountable for what he did. It was horrible. Um, I know I've been looking at the, uh, Let's get my, I lost, lost my website I had up. A Bureau of uh, Statistics, they use what's uh, called the uh, National Crime Victim Survey. Um, it's a lot, lot different than what the narrative we're hearing. Uh, yes, is there crimes of bias? Absolutely. Uh, do they need to be dealt with? Absolutely. But like Le Representative uh, Lucero said, some of the definitions and some of the stuff put in here goes way beyond um, what's going on here. We already have sexual orientation in it. Now they're adding, uh, uh, find my page I marked in here, adding other things. Uh, 9.3.31. I, I believe that's where I was getting to. Fingers will work. But they add, added extra things. Um, right now there's uh, two sexes, male, male and female. Sexual orientation, the last time I heard was, the number I heard was 87. I don't know how that works out. But it's going to, and they keep adding. So it's going to be hard for some of these individuals to do it. I like the idea of uh, the uh, looking into it, getting the information on those grants. But I think it should be done by, not by outside groups, but it should be by, done um, in, in his amendment he had. Uh, I have uh, had three different grants going out. It could be done with just one or two, uh, dealing with the dealing with either uh, Department of uh, Justice or Judiciary looking into it. A lot of that information will be in the ju judicial system already. Um, and with that, I do have some problems with this bill. We had some problems with it last time. Um, I, also, I also authored House File 107, which is the issues that uh, we dealt with last year that, that were agreed upon. Unfortunately, that wasn't brought up. So, but with that, with, with some of the things in here, I cannot support this bill and I'm gonna ask my members not to either. Very well, Representative uh, Bag, and then we'll move to Bob. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to correct the record that um, reference made uh, about the Atlanta gunmen and how um, folks were quick to justify his actions. And I will just say that nothing is more racist than to blame a group of people for your problem and then further dehumanize them as sexual objects. Um, this, it, it's, um, you know, I, I will just leave it at that and I hope members reflect on that. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Bang. Uh, the chair renews his motion to House File 1691 as amended be referred to the Judiciary Committee. The clerk will take the roll. Chair Mariani. All right. Chair Just Mariani, aye. So Vice Chair Frazier. Vice Chair Frazier, aye. Representative Johnson. No. Representative Johnson, nay. Representative Edelson. Aye. 
Representative Edelson, aye. Representative Feist? Aye. Representative Feist, aye. Representative Grossel? No. Representative Grossel, nay. Representative Hollins? Aye. Representative Hollins, aye. Representative Hewitt? Aye. Representative Hewitt, aye. Representative Cleborn? Aye. Representative Cleborn, aye. Representative Long? Aye. Representative Long, aye. Representative Lucero? No. Representative Lucero, nay. Representative Mueller? Mueller votes no. Representative Mueller, nay. Representative Novotny? Novotny, no. Representative Novotny, nay. Representative O'Neill? No. Representative O'Neill, nay. Representative Pinto? Aye. Representative Pinto, aye. Representative Poston? No. Representative Poston, nay. Representative Raleigh? Raleigh, nay. Representative Raleigh, nay. Representative Vang? Aye. Representative Vang, aye. Representative Zhang, excused. That concludes roll call with 10 ayes and eight nays. Thank you, on a vote of uh, 10 ayes, uh, uh, eight nays, uh, the motion prevails. And House file 1691 as amended is referred to the Judiciary Committee. Thank you, Representative Horstein, for a very important bill. Uh, best wishes in the uh, Judiciary Committee. Uh, Thank members. you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, members.